Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the Asus Novago, which is one of the first Windows 10 computers to feature an ARM-based processor. It has a Qualcomm Snapdragon 835 chip, which is one of the fastest smartphone processors from 2017, but it's 2018 now, and the processor is in a couple of tablets and this convertible notebook-style uh, device, which you can use as a tablet or a laptop. In a previous video, I took a look at the Asus Novago running Windows 10 S, which is the operating system it ships with. It's a sort of limited version of Windows, doesn't allow you to install applications from outside the Microsoft Store, and in exchange for that, you sort of get some streamlined features and security and performance. Uh, it's fairly easy to switch from Windows 10 S to Windows 10 Pro, though. All you have to do is go to the Microsoft Store, search for the Switch to Windows 10 Pro app and install it, and within a minute, you're basically up and running. You don't even have to reboot the device. Uh, there's no real difference other than a couple of restrictions between the versions of the operating system. But since this is a device with an ARM-based processor, it does mean that uh, some applications might not run at all. So uh, what I've got here is a mission in StarCraft II that's loading. And the reason we're starting with StarCraft is because it runs really slowly and it took several minutes just to get the game up and running. So we're going to start with this, but I'll tell you a little bit more about some of the restrictions now. Uh, you can run applications that are designed for ARM-based processors or for x86 processors like Intel or AMD chips. But if you're going to run anything designed for an Intel or an AMD chip, it needs to be 32-bit software. Uh, there's some emulation required to emulate x86 architecture, and it can't do 64-bit applications. So for instance, in addition to a couple of games like StarCraft II that I installed here, uh, I loaded uh, LibreOffice, no problem, GIMP, no problem, so I can do document editing, I can do image editing. Uh, I loaded Handbrake for video transcoding. Handbrake is currently only available as a 64-bit application, but there are older versions that run as 32-bit applications. So I was able to install Handbrake, but I had to go with an older version. Uh, the Google Chrome web browser, I had trouble getting it to install at first. Uh, it was easier to install. I kept running into error messages, but eventually I installed uh, Chrome Developer Channel and Chrome Beta Channel, and then for some reason I was able to install Chrome. Microsoft says Edge will work better because it's optimized for 64-bit uh, uh, or for ARM-based processors, but you can install Google Chrome if you prefer that. Um, anyways, it looks like we're up and running here. I'm going to go ahead and turn the sound on a little bit and just show you how awful StarCraft II runs. Now, other games, this is, this is a game that's pretty resource intensive. Other games might run better. Uh, for example, I also have StarCraft 1 on here, and it actually runs just fine. In fact, it's one of the most usable and enjoyable experiences I've had on this laptop. And maybe that's not surprising. It's a 20-year-old game. It runs great. StarCraft 2, on the other hand, is running at one frame per second. So this game is pretty much unplayable. It installs, but it's pretty much unplayable. Now, I installed Steam and, uh, and tried to load a couple of other games, including Batman Arkham uh, Asylum, and the game installed, but it wouldn't run. It ran into sort of a graphical error and just wouldn't even start. I installed uh, Grim Fandango Remastered. Again, graphical error wouldn't start. And I installed uh, Oxenfree, and that game wouldn't even start. So there are some limitations on uh, games and other things that require OpenGL or specific uh, DirectX features. I was able to get Luminous City to install and run, but it runs very, very slowly, much like this game. And uh, I can't tell you exactly how slowly because the frame counter doesn't seem to want to work, at least not on the beginning. So let's go ahead and exit StarCraft II and I'll show you, see it still says one frame per second here, and we're just at a loading screen. Uh, so I'm going to exit this and show you a couple of other things. You can use this for gaming. Like I said, StarCraft 1 actually runs just fine. Uh, you're just going to have to be very selective with the games that you want to run. So, you know, I think, I think to some degree the computer is being positioned as not just a regular computer. So the ARM-based processor is a very low power chip that there we go. Uh, low power chip that offers long battery life and you do get pretty long battery life on this computer it has integrated 4g lte connectivity so you can insert the sim card and use it anywhere you go 
And those benefits are both true, um, but at the same time, the performance as, as a general purpose computer can be a little bit on the slow side. Some applications work fine. Sometimes switching between applications, you don't necessarily see a big problem. Uh, and when you're running just a single application in full screen mode, it you know works pretty nicely. So we're about to show you StarCraft, uh, the original version of StarCraft here, and you'll see what I mean. But the um, you know, in, in, in terms of other experiences, I've encountered issues where I'll open a web page uh, that requires text input and start typing, and it takes a while before my words show up on the screen after I type the input. Uh, likewise, when I'm trying to create documents using LibreOffice. It's not a backlit keyboard, um, which is something that I didn't think would bother me as much as it does in 2018, but you get really pretty used to the fact that you can use backlit keyboards. Um, and so not having one on a device that sells for $5.99 and, uh, and up seems a little bit weird. Um, and in terms of the general performance, you get the general kind of performance that you might expect from a much older computer or a, a much slower, cheaper computer. So, While cheaper computers aren't necessarily going to have full HD screens and aren't necessarily going to have uh, 4G LTE connectivity, you won't necessarily get the convertible tablet style display. But for $5.99 and up, you kind of expect something that's going to be able to run uh, more applications than this. Anyways, as I mentioned, what we've got here is StarCraft running at over 100 frames per second. So this game actually works just fine. Whereas StarCraft 2 is virtually unplayable. Okay, so let's exit out of this, and I'll show you a couple of other non-gaming things. Uh, for instance, let's go ahead and load up the office, create a little Word document, or a text document. So, I don't know if you saw that, but when I first started typing, it took a little, a second for the words to catch up on the screen. Uh, it's a problem that comes and goes. I experience it more sometimes than others. Uh, I'm not really sure why the issue wasn't really that bad there, but I've seen it get much, much worse. Uh, let's try opening a spreadsheet. Calculating the sum. So, again, there's a little bit of lag there, but basically when I'm just doing one thing at a time, the computer seems to work reasonably well. Um, let's go ahead and load GIMP, which is a program that, even on the fastest of computers, tends to be relatively slow at loading. Now, all the applications that I've just shown you are things that are not available in the Microsoft Store at this point, which means that you get the advantage of being able to run them by going to Windows 10 Pro. You might have to do a little bit of hunting to find 32-bit versions of some applications. Uh, for example, as uh, uh, Handbrake, their newest version, doesn't support 32-bit uh, architecture, so I had to go with an older version. Uh, Chrome, I had a little bit of a difficult time installing, but once I got it uh, up and running, it works just fine. It's a little bit on the slower side uh, compared to Microsoft Edge, which comes uh, built into the operating system, I think. But um, but it works. You can use the browser. And so you know, here we are. We can edit documents, highlight.
of different parts of the field. Uh, go in and crop, etc. While watching videos, this is actually a video of the thing that we're looking at right now. So overall, you know, I think I think there's not much reason that you would want to stick with Windows 10 S unless you're worried about the implications of finding that not every application that you want to run is going to run. I haven't seen any major impact in terms of battery life uh, or overall performance. You just have to realize that certain applications won't run at all, and some applications will run, but they'll run very slowly. So it's the difference between StarCraft 2 and StarCraft 1 there. Uh, now those are games, obviously. That's something that if what you're looking for is a computer specifically to play games, this is probably not the best choice at, a, at $599 and up for something with relatively slow performance. Um, but if you're looking for something with long battery life and portability and you want the ability to occasionally run a game, I'd say stick with older titles or applications that are designed uh, for distribution through the Microsoft Store and you'll probably have a better experience. Um, so overall, it works a lot like the Windows 10 S software, when you switch to Windows 10 Pro, the main difference is that you have support for running different applications that might not otherwise be available, realizing that it might be a slightly frustrating experience when you try installing certain applications that seem like they should run and they don't. Um, for example, uh, I was able to install Reaper, which is my preferred audio editing software. Works just fine out of the box. I'm even able to use it to uh, to record and edit and do everything that I would normally do for making a podcast, for instance, or uh, music recordings. But when I tried installing DaVinci Resolve, which is a free application for video editing, um, it wouldn't run. So uh, that's because it only supports 64-bit computers, so or, or computers with 64-bit chips. So you know you're you're going to have a little bit of sort of Frustration, I think, if you go through the process of downloading, installing applications, and then finding out that they're not necessarily going to run. Um, are these issues that could potentially be resolved in the future? Maybe. Uh, is am I am I still kind of hopeful about ARM-based processors as an uh, alternative to Intel and AMD? Kind of. I don't think that they're good enough yet. So we're starting to see uh, hints that. Mm, Qualcomm has a new processor, the uh, Snapdragon 835, which the company says is going to offer up to 30% better performance. That's good. Uh, I would really like to see even more of a performance improvement because the truth of the matter is right now, the only real benefit I see to getting this device is that it's relatively lo low cost for a computer with integrated 4G LTE. Uh, in terms of battery life, there are Intel-based computers that get battery life that are about as good as this. It's supposed to get maybe 15, 16, you know, more hours of, uh, of battery life. In my experience, it's more like eight to 10 hours. And I've seen plenty of Intel powered laptops that get eight to 10 hours of battery life, but they don't necessarily have 4G LTE, particularly in this price range. Um, but in terms of performance, I think you're probably better off using your phone as a modem, buying an external modem, or paying extra to get a modem integrated into a device with an Intel processor if you're looking for a computer that you can really use as a general purpose PC. This is fanless, which is kind of nice, but it also weighs over three pounds, which is it makes it a little bit on the clunky side for a device like this. I think when I first heard that we were going to have ARM-based uh, computers that run Windows 10, I was excited about thin, light, portable, long battery life, integrated LTE. The long battery life is really just not as much of a distinguishing feature as it used to be. The integrated LTE is, but the trade-off here is performance. Uh, so hopefully when we start to see Snapdragon 850 powered devices, we don't just see slightly more power uh, or powerful performance, but we also maybe will see lower prices. I'm not sure that that's the case because it's going to be a newer chip and, and it's really going to be up to uh, device makers to cheap out on some other hardware because that chip isn't probably going to be super cheap. Um, but maybe in a couple of years, we'll start to see ARM really catch up. Um, it's going to be tricky to do if people don't buy these first generation models. And the first generation models, I'm not sure, it's it's not very easy to recommend them. So I'm hopeful that in the future things could get better and ARM could be a real competitor, especially for low-end, low-power devices uh, in the Windows 10 space. But uh, today, they just seem overpriced for what you're getting. So anyways, that's another look at the... ASOS Nova Go. 
uh, this time with Windows 10 Pro. You can find more details at lilliputing.com about this computer and all sorts of other portable computing devices. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.